How's everybody doing? We are gearing up for an amazing event here, the Sip and Savor at Home event presented by Wyoming Millwork, and we will be getting that started here very, very soon. I just wanted to take a second to welcome everybody to do a little bit of housekeeping. My name is Chris. I'm with King Creative. We are helping support this amazing organization with Meals on Wheels of Delaware. And just so you guys know a little bit about how the Zoom function works, we want you to use that chat feature on the bottom of your screen. You see the little thought bubble. Use that to send in some questions. If you have any thoughts or ideas that you want to send towards either the hosts or maybe the celebrity chefs, the mixologists, or anybody throughout the meeting, please use that. We'll be monitoring the chat throughout the program. And again, we are here to support an incredible organization. And I want to go through the schedule so we can show you the flow of this event. I'm just going to bring that up here right now so you guys can see it. This is the way it's going to flow today. We're going to start a little bit about the organization, and then we're going to work into what we hope is going to be the mixology portion of the event. We may be flipping that with the cooking just based on some minor difficulties with tech, but things happen in this virtual world. And then we're going to go into the cooking demonstration and finish things up with a musical piece. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys are going to enjoy it. So here we are, time to sip and savor. That's right, all in support of Meals on Wheels because together we can end senior hunger. And that is a beautiful thing. And to help us do that, our MC, one of two hosts today to help kick things off, Mr. Lyndon Urich, how are you, sir? We're bringing you in to kick this thing and get us started. Lyndon, I know you're ready to go. You're rocking your colors and everything will get you up here now yeah we are Penn State college football still lives on hey thank you Chris as Chris mentioned my name is Lyndon Yerrick and I have the privilege to be one of the board members on Meals on Wheels Delaware we're looking forward to a great event uh, I have the pleasure to be uh, co-hosting this with a super super funny individual the comedian K Mac and she'll have a chance to jump in here in just a little bit there she is. Oh, it seems just like yesterday that we were at Dover Downs doing this uh, event in person, having the actual experience of uh, dining and laughing together and having some cocktails. But all that being said, we wanna thank our committee for pulling this together in this challenging time. Between the committee members, the volunteers, our sponsors who stuck with us, and the guests that are participating today, we could not do this without you and your support and your help. Ideally, we'll be back in person sometime soon having this great event, but again, a terrific, huge shout out to those committee members pulling this together during COVID-19, engaging us into a sip and saver virtual Zoom format, committee members, board members, sponsors, guests participating. This is gonna be a fun day. Look forward to uh, seeing a great meal getting prepared and maybe seeing a couple cocktails getting mixed. With that, I'll shift it over to my co-host, the illustrious Kay Mack. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Lyndon, and I could not agree with you more. We want to thank everyone from the bottom of our heart. If you do not know me, I am comedian Kay Mack, the comedian with the big heart who gets the big laughs. And it is my job today just to ensure that through this entire event that you have a smile on your face. I'm gonna do everything I can to ensure that you have a great time this afternoon. But are you ready? Are you ready to spice up and add a pinch of yum to your quarantine cooking routine? I know I am. So whether you're a cooking rookie or a seasoned chef, we have a great lineup plan for tonight that we hope you enjoy. And the funds, the funds raised at Sip and Savor at Home and other events across the state ensure that much needed meals continue to reach waiting seniors. And you can continue to support by donating at mealsonwheelsde.org or by signing up to volunteer and of course, make sure that you check out all of the auction items that we have on the site. And to sign up, all you have to do 
is text SIP, that's S-I-P, 2020-2020. Text SIP 2020 to 243725. I'll say that again. You're going to text the word SIP 2020 to 243725. And there you will receive an invitation to register. The community actually plays a crucial role in the continued success of Sip and Savor. Thanks to our chefs, all of the entertainers and mixologists with us this weekend, the planning committee and everyone who donated to the great auction, the Department of Motor Vehicle for the license plates, and of course, our wonderful sponsors, and ticket buyers who made this event possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, K Mac, thank you for that. Thank you for that, K Mac. My pleasure. We are grateful for our community's dedication to this great event. The presenting sponsor. Coming back again in 2020, my good friends from Wyoming Millwork, the Sip and Saver 2020 lead sponsor, my good friends with Wyoming Millwork, Dave and Craig Failing. We have a little bit of a little video from the two of them to share with you right now. Craig and I are really happy and, and fortunate to be able to support Wheels on Wheels again this year. Uh, all we can say is it's great what you do and keep it up and keep doing it. Right. I just want to thank everybody again for all the hard work, uh, especially in these crazy times. So thank you very much. <laughs> that was a wonderful video. Thank you so much to Wyoming Millwork. Thank you so much. I've actually, during COVID, you know, a lot of us have gotten a little lazy. So I've seen some people with some expired license tags this year. I don't know if you've noticed it, Lyndon, but I, I've happened to start seeing it a little bit, right? Amen to so, that. Yeah, this is a way to catch up and get that taken care of. I'm trying. As many of you know, though, the Department of Transportation donated a prestigious four-digit license plate, number 9946, to Mills on Wheels to raffle. And so we are happy to say that the tickets have actually sold out. However, we'd like to share a brief message from Secretary Cohen. Hi there, everybody. Jennifer Cohen here. Um, we're super excited for this year's Meals on Wheels fundraising event. Um, they've done a great job. I know it's all virtual. We would rather be together, um, but lots of food, lots of fun, lots of music, and all for a great cause. We've been partnering with Meals on Wheels for over 15 years now. I um, couldn't be more proud of the work that they do providing life-sustaining meals for our seniors in Delaware. And it's more important now than it's ever been in, in our history during these challenging times. So um, I'm super excited to once again offer all of you the opportunity to take home a piece of Delaware history. And we're going to be auctioning off a four-digit license plate, black and white porcelain, just like the originals. Uh, please, please, please uh, sign up for tickets. Um, tickets are going to be available until Saturday at midnight. You can get tickets at mealsonwheelsde.org and zoom in with me on Sunday at five to see if you are the lucky winner. Bye. Oh, she is so sweet. Thank you so much, Secretary Cohen, for that beautiful message. Um, we are actually so thrilled to say, da -da -da -da, I wish I had a little drum roll or some, some noise happening in the chat room right now. But I'm so excited to say that we've actually raised $3,255. What's that you say, K-Mac? I'm going to repeat it again just in <laughs> case somebody didn't hear me in the back, okay? I said $3,255 in raffle ticket sales. Guys, I hear the crowd ah, going crazy. That's amazing. Thank you so much to everybody who purchased tickets. And good luck to you all. I mean, I won. I, I didn't want to spoil it, but, you know, I, I'm going to win it. But I'm so glad that you were still able to participate. You know, we appreciate that, you know, but I'm taking home the license plate. But actually, the winner will be announced on Sunday. All right. Um, so 
they're showing the virtual auction bidding instructions right now. Uh, so that's cool for uh, one calls mobile bidding for the silent, silent auction. So go to the website, go to millsonwheels.org, de.org, and check out the bidding instructions for the virtual auction. All right. Yeah, I say with that and, black license tag, someone's getting a steal. Those are collector items. You have license know. plate watcher, four digits down to three, down to two, down to one. You see a, a two digit and below, that's some rare air. Now, is it true that the high, the lower the number, the more expensive that it is? That is $100,000 plus correct answer. They are collector's items. Forget collecting stamps, whatever. In Delaware, black tags are the thing to have. That is so cool. That is so cool. So you're going to be a part of a collector's club uh, right. once you win this license plate. So that's amazing. I do want to give everyone a gentle reminder again um, for our auction. And I know that everything was set up for there. So again, uh, text SIP 2020. You know, I'm, I'm going to do an example for you. you take a sip. Mm. Sip. I got coffee, right? Because I wasn't ready for our mixologist yet. But uh, you're going to do SIP 2020. Text it to 243 seven two five let me see some um some 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 action in the chat room to let me know that you got it we're going to text sip 2020 to 243 725 we have lots of fantastic packages in there from chanel i know some of y'all fancy on, on here on the zoom today so we got some chanel for you we got some wine for you as well as some grilling packages and so much more. So I urge you to please go to, um, go to the website, check out all the auction packages that we have on there and get involved. Sweet. I thought it was a channel. I thought it had something to do with the TV. I guess I got to get out of slower, lower <laughs> Delaware a little bit better. That would be a good auction item too. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe with that, uh, who's ready for a cocktail? I'd like Ooh. to introduce our mixologist for today, and that's Mr. Ron Gomes from the Painted Stave Distilling Conglomerate in Smyrna, Delaware. If you haven't been to the Painted Stave Distillery in Smyrna, I would encourage you to check it out. Ron and Mike are mixing up, getting some fantastic whiskey, some vodka, making it there, purchase it there. If you can't make it out to Smyrna, go to one of your local liquor stores here in the state of Delaware and some surrounding areas. Now, Ron's going to show us how to make the Diamond State Bourbon Smash. Ron, wow. are you with us? I am here. Hey, there we go. You ready to go? We are ready. We're Thanks. thirsty, Ron. We are very thirsty. All right. Representative Yurik, uh, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. I'd like to thank uh, folks at Meals on Wheels as well for inviting me uh, to participate in this uh, wonderful event. Um, I'm excited to bring to you a cocktail that is a classic that I, I believe will pair very well with Chef Bintanza's dish to follow. It's called a bourbon smash. Now the reason why I selected this cocktail to pair with this dish is because it's light, it's citrusy, it is easy to make. Anybody can make this, anybody can enjoy this. So this cocktail has some history. So I'd like to start with a little history. This cocktail first made its debut in 1862. And Jerry Thomas is credited with developing in this cocktail. And uh, he has written into some of the early bartending guides of the day. Now think back to 1862, perhaps not unlike today. Our country was fighting a civil war. Abraham Lincoln was the president country was also dealing with a number of pandemics. You know, typhus, we had uh, yellow fever to deal with. And if you think back to your Civil War history, three out of four soldiers were killed, not by the war, not by a battle, but by diseases that plagued the day. Another interesting but more local, locally relevant uh, piece of history there. In 1862, Harriet Tubman, General Harriet Tubman, was uh, written to be in... Um, South Carolina at Port Royal, serving the North in its efforts as a nurse and a spy. 
Now let's bring it even closer to home. Whiskey back in the day, not nearly as refined as it is today. And that's why I chose to use our Diamond State bourbon in this cocktail. So a um, little history to set the stage. Now bourbon smashes have five basic ingredients. They have a spirit base. Today it's going to be bourbon, but it could be vodka, gin, whiskey, or rum, or any other spirit that you have. It also has mint. That is an unwavering element in this cocktail. It doesn't change, although you could change the, uh, the type of mint that you use in the cocktail to change up the cocktail. Then the cocktail dives into fruit. Typically seasonal fruits are used in this cocktail. And today, because we're pairing it with this fish, we're gonna use lemon. And I think it'll go nicely with the honey as well that's in the, in the fish dish. Uh, next, we have a sugar source. We need a sugar source to balance out the bittering components, the sour, the bitter that are gonna be found in this cocktail from the uh, uh, fresh uh, fruit ingredients that we're gonna add. So today we're gonna use a pretty blank slate, uh, simple syrup. It's derived from um, pure cane sugar, but you could enhance your cocktail by uh, deriving your simple syrup from a raw, simple, from a raw sugar source like demure sugar. You could use honey, you could use agave syrups as well. So all those things will change up the cocktail. And then the last remaining ingredient is ice. And the quality of ice is really important. Here at the distillery, all of our water that makes our ice is filtered, first through a guard filter and then through uh, activated carbon. And we want to clean up the ice so that it doesn't impart off-putting flavors into the cocktail. All right, so those are the basic ingredients. And I know you're getting tired of me talking already. So let's, let's start to build this cocktail. What do we need to build this cocktail? Well, you need a mixing glass, you need a shaking tin, how about a muddler or back of the spoon? Anything that's going to aid in the smashing of the ingredients into the cocktail. A couple of strainers. Classically, this cocktail was strained. I personally don't like to chew my cocktail, so I like to use uh, uh, like the, a double straining method. And in my hand here is called a Hawthorne strainer. And it is the spring, the tightness of the spring on this strainer that is going to pull out the ingredients that you don't want floating in your cocktail. And as I said, we're gonna use this wire mesh strainer to double strain our cocktail to ensure that we have uh, no bits to chew on. All right, so that's it. That's really it. So let's get going. Yes. We're gonna take three slices of fresh lemon. All right, Ron, looks like we lost your volume there for a second, but it looks like you've got the three slices of lemon in there and then put in the other ingredients. I'm not sure why the audio would have switched on us there. All right, let's try that. Am I back? You're back. Yes. Yes. Good. Not sure. All right, so we got three slices of, uh, of lemon in here and we got about eight sprigs of mint. Perfect. Next, we're going to add three quarter ounces of simple syrup right to the mixing glass. And then we're gonna pick up our muddler and we're gonna have at it. We're just gonna muddle this, pushing it all together, smashing all the bits together, releasing the oils and the juices from the lemon and the mint, mixing them all together. Once that's done. Now Ron, real quick, is that, is that partly how you stay in such good shape? The muddling? <laughs> Lifting lots of bottles. We're gonna <laughs> add two ounces of uh, Diamond State straight bourbon right into the glass. Then we're going to add ice, fill the glass about halfway with ice, add some ice to your rocks glass because that's what you're going to be sipping on here in a moment. Then we're going to invert this right into your shaker. Now if you've never shaken a cocktail, there is technique that should be applied to this. The idea behind shaking a cocktail is dilution. We're trying to get about a half ounce of water out of the ice, but we don't need ice chips, so we don't want to shake it up and down. If we shake in a circular motion to allow the ice to ride on the outside of the shaker, that's ideal. So we want to shake this for a good 10 seconds or so. 
And because we're on live TV, I'll pretend that five seconds is 10 seconds. So once that's nice and cold, we're gonna break that apart. We're gonna add our Hawthorne strainer to the top. The Hawthorne strainer has a lip for your finger. It's gonna allow you to apply a little bit of pressure forward. We're gonna pick up our other strainer and we're gonna double strain this cocktail right into the glass. Like so. Get a little garnish, a little extra mint, maybe a little extra lemon. And there we go. Cheers. That looks amazing. Lovely. Let me see you taste it. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. Mm. We yeah. don't need no Tom Cruise for our cocktails. We got we sure Ron Jones. Oh, another one oh, for the people in the back. Today. One more sip for the people in the back. <laughs> Happily. I'm sure Ron would welcome a chance to see all of us in person in his uh, distillery, distilling, painted stave distilling at Smyrna. He and his partner making great cocktails every day in person as well as get out to the local liquor stores and purchase some product for us. There you go. Absolutely. Got to give a little plug too. We just rolled out our taco truck. Taco Hardeen opened on Thursday here at the distillery. If you're looking for Baja, California, Baja Peninsula, California, Baja, Mexico, street tacos, this is the place to be now. You can get your fabulous cocktails like Smash, and you can get some fresh made tacos out of our taco truck. Take a look at tacoardeen.com. I couldn't get off of this without doing that shame, you know, that shameful <laughs> plug. So, yeah. Well, and, and Ron, what would be, what are some of the other pairings you might have there with the taco truck in, in the distillery? I'm sure you've got some fun combinations you could do there. Yeah, we're still in our, uh, in our summer menu, if you will. And the summer menu is uh, featuring essentially tiki-based cocktails. While we don't make rum, uh, we've built a number, about 10 uh, different style of tiki-based cocktails, uh, just fun for sipping during, during the summer. Um, this cocktail, as we come into fall, you could evolve it by, you know, taking uh, the lemon out of it and substituting in figs, apples, you know, uh, fruits of, of the fall. Uh, passion fruit would work and um, create a totally different cocktail. Ron, we have a question from the audience. What is your most used ingredient when making cocktails? I, it's, uh, here at the distillery or personally? <laughs> um, Give us both. <laughs> most you, our patrons really like uh, a, more of a blank slate. So we use a lot of vodka base uh, as, a, as a spirit here at the distillery. Yeah. Wow. The two, the two products that sell the best, however, for us in terms of bottles, mm -hmm. this is one of them, the Diamond State Straight Bourbon Whiskey, and then our Lavender Forward Gin, Candy Manor. Wow. Yeah. That looks amazing. And I, I can't believe you don't have one, K Mac. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. COVID held me back a little bit. Put that coffee away now. <laughs> <laughs> and we just wanted to remind everybody take pictures as you're sipping along and savoring this experience. Ron, that was awesome. And I definitely am going to be getting down there to the distillery, checking out the food truck, and we'll have to be stocking up for the winter here soon and uh, getting the supplies in check at the home bar. So thanks again for that. Take those pictures. Be sure to share them through social media. K-Mac, I believe you had those hashtags. Yes, hashtag Mills on Wheels, D-E, hashtag Mills. And for all my seasoned um, family members online, that is the old pound button on the phone. <laughs> all right, so that is hashtag or pound button, Mills on Wheels, D-E. Or you can do hashtag uh, sip and savor when you're posting yes, your wonderful pictures of you taking a sip or you eating some food or just having fun with us this afternoon. Yeah, and thanks again, Ron. We really appreciate you letting us into the distillery and uh, sharing a little bit of something there with the cocktail. It looks amazing, and I know everybody at home is enjoying it. So thanks again. Cheers. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Ron. Let's get out there and support our local businesses like uh, Ron and Mike at uh, Painted Stave. Great place, great vibe. Now you throw in a taco truck. 
I don't know what else we could ask for. Yeah. I know what we could ask for. It's time to do a little cooking. Oh, yes. Now we have the pleasure of bringing in the chef. The oh. chef from Cool Springs Fish Bar and Restaurant, one of the best places to eat in Kent County. No, I mean the state of Delaware. So we have chef Joe Fatanzo joining us today to show us how to make the bourbon salmon. One of the great dishes you can find at Cool Springs here in central Delaware. And again, I apologize for saying one of the best restaurants in Kent County. It's obviously one of the best restaurants in the state of Delaware, maybe the mid-Atlantic region. Oh, wow. That if you haven't been there, please get there very quickly. And if you have been there, get back and see uh, the Forbes family, Dennis and Carolyn, as soon as you can. Great family restaurant, 21 years plus at uh, uh, this location. Been uh, serving great meals for years here in central Delaware. So with that, Chef, take it away. Uh, hello. How's everybody doing today? Hi, Excellent. Chef. So today we're gonna to serve you a delicious treat, the honey bourbon salmon. In the salmon, we have bourbon sauce and we have our honey bourbon glaze, which we make with the honey bourbon sauce with the recipe I gave you. <clears throat> you just put it in a pan, put it on low heat and reduce it down until it's nice and thick. And that's how you get your glaze sauce for the end. So everything we need is one nice seven ounce piece of wild salmon. We got fresh squeezed lemon juice, our honey bourbon, and salt and pepper. And we're gonna be cooking this on our flat top grill. I have it set on about 375. So first thing we're gonna do, take our freshly squeezed lemon juice, coat the salmon. Take our honey bourbon sauce, shake it up. Coat that all over. All right. Are we on? I think so. Okay. And yeah, now we're going, now we're cooking. That's the stuff. Are we on? All right. And then we just put some salt. You want to take some Pam, spray your grill, that way it doesn't stick. And we're going to put this side down. Let that cook. Now this is one of my favorite dishes because it includes alcohol and food. Well, hold on, Chef. We're just having a little trouble. We're switching your mic to the other angle here. I mean, at this point, does it really matter what he's saying? Because I can smell it through the computer. You can't. I'm <laughs> I was, it's just looking good so far. You ain't got to say another word. Mm, yes. That picture speaks a thousand plus words. Yes, it does. Here, let's get over here and show you what the top looks like. Uh, we're getting some feedback there, Chef. I don't know if you've got the volume up on both the phone and the computer, but we just got to be careful we're not doubling up there. That's all. But it looks good. All right. Are we good now? That's better. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, Carolyn, let's just show them what the, the top looks like. We got a nice sear on the top, nice and caramelized. Oh, it looks amazing. Flip it. I like to take the skin off. You can do it however you would like. How long is that sear going to take on each side? What's, uh, what's um, on? It depends on if you have your grill on a nice 400, then not really that long. You just want to... Get it on there nice and hot. Put some more honey bourbon down. Put the lid on it. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. Then we're just going to go over here. Looks like a little honey bourbon house. <laughs> Chef, don't be surprised if you hear a little knock on your door. It's just me. Okay. Yeah, feel free to hold Feel free to follow them over there if you want with that angle. This dish really doesn't take too, too long. It's very quick and simple and easy. And then once you got that nice caramelized on the one side, just flip it over. Mm. 
You didn't have to say mm like that, chef. Because you're making me more hungry. <laughs> So in the other pan, what we got over there? Vegetables? Yeah, we just got ourselves a little broccoli melody. Mmm. 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 That way we have a nice dish. Hey, Joey. Mm. What are some of the other uh, great meals you prepare at uh, Cool Springs? Oh, all of them are great. The shellfish ham roast is one of our best sellers. And also the honey bourbon salmon, that's one of our best sellers at Cool Springs. Wow. Now, it's not just for the seafood lover. I know the prime rib is uh, also... Uh, the prime rib and our rockfish is very excellent. So is honey grilled some salmon the only one can you do a honey grilled anything else any other meats or substitutes oh, yeah, yeah. Put honey bourbon sauce on anything you'd like wow and and how's everybody doing at home as you guys cooking along making some salmon so yeah we, oh, we, got molly. we got molly over here i'd actually if you guys don't mind i'd love to jump in on molly oh nice Hi, molly and uh Hi. how you're doing you have you have some salmon it's in the pan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See it? By mixing the rice. Oh, you got your Ooh. Very cool. So where's the salmon? Can we see it? Yeah. Sure. In the pan. Oh man. All right. So in the pan. Gonna, it's in the pan. Gonna, we're doing a you spot see? check with Molly's salmon. In the pan. Oh, there it is. Oh, so, oh yeah. that looks amazing. What do you think, Chef? How's she doing? Hey. Yeah, the spill. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's all right. Well, hey, it's good to see you guys are doing great. Yeah, thanks. It's fun. Mm -hmm. We'll head back over to Chef to, to keep it going. All right. How do I switch over to the other camera? Oh, oh, the finished presentation. Oh, Chef. We got a nice sear on top, and then we're going to finish it off with our honey bourbon glaze. Oh, we just need music in the background the way you just poured that. <laughs> I think that. I'm in love. Man, we're going we're gonna to get some music from the salad. You can eat it with french fries or you can eat it by itself. Mm, wow. But this is one of our specialties and I'm glad to make it for you guys. No, we appreciate it. So what are some of, is that, I mean, with the salmon, is there a season that is best for salmon or are there things that we should be thinking about as we're kind of uh, making Not really, it's good all year round. What are some of the things that you would recommend coming up in this season? Because we obviously we're coming up on fall and uh, is there some things that might be good for us to start looking into cooking? Um, well, since it's almost fall time, it's almost butternut squash season. And we have this great butternut squash with seared scallops at Cool Springs. And that's really good. Nice and seasonal. Mm. Oh, very cool. Oh. Looks like we have some chat actions, uh, K Mac. I don't know if you see those or. I was just about to bring it up, Chef. We have a question, and it says, "For the salmon, what if you don't like bourbon? Can you use a different type of alcohol?" Um, I think you could, but the it's all on however you want it. We like the honey bourbon, so that's what we stick with. <laughs> and do you do you? This is my own personal question, but do you prefer? wild caught salmon or does it have to be fresh salmon like what's your preference i prefer wild caught that's what we use at our restaurant and mm -hmm. that's what we ever used and it's never been a problem wow that's and that's personally what i like too i don't like um like farm reefs. and why may i ask um i don't know i just think flavor and texture is like kind of different i think wild caught is more better right more better I yeah. like your adjectives. I like the way you put that together, <laughs> Chef. <laughs> it's all on whatever you prefer. Hey, with the, with the chef at Cool Springs, what's a cool thing about Cool Springs is that it's an open face restaurant where I think that's the technical term. Yes. In layman's language, you can actually see your meal getting prepared, whether you're, you know, happen to just walking in or you have a seat at the bar. You'll be able to see Chef there. You're cooking alongside uh, Dennis. Uh, one of the co-owners with his wife, Carolyn. Carolyn's working out hard on the, uh, you know, between the bar, seating individuals, maybe chumps behind the grill a little bit here and there. 
Uh, but you'll be able to see this same meal getting prepared. If, really, if you happen to have a seat at the bar, wow. the bar restaurant, it just adds to it. So with this chef might be his you know, first taste of uh, super next stardom, you know, uh, maybe on the cooking channel or the food network. Uh, even without that, Cool Springs in uh, Central Delaware and Dover, Delaware, great place to eat. Fantastic people. Uh, if you haven't been there, get there. And if you have been there, get there again, support local. What's really cool about this event as well, that we're really supporting local uh, with uh, Painted Stave as well as Cool Springs, that this is a way that these people spend a traveling some time that uh, they need our support. Uh, they need our support and get out there and help uh, uh, keep these restaurants and uh, distilleries in business. Definitely. I have one more question from the audience to the chef. Is there a particular reason to have the skin on and off of the salmon? I know you took it off, and that's a preference, but it, was that something you learned over the years? Was uh, yeah, that's just something we do at our restaurant. I just know more people like the skin off. If they want it on, we could definitely leave it on, but we just take it off for everybody, and if they want it on, we can keep it on. I like my skin off, personally. You know, see, if something like if you cooked it a little longer, could you make the skin a little crispy or something, or do something with it? Definitely, it would be crispier. Mmm, that's what I'm talking about. I like the crunch. I'm just putting it out there. You know what I'm saying? That's right. <laughs> if you like the crunch, you would like one of their appetizers, the fish bait, where it's uh, it's got some great crunch, a variety of fish. Uh, that Linda, comes how many times have you been to this restaurant? I'm, I'm a frequent flyer. I mean, not. Uh, I wish I could say I'm there on a weekly basis, but um, uh, we get over there and see them and they do a super job. Great people. I can't wait. Great vibe, great restaurant. Definitely come check us out. Yeah, Thank you. There's no question that uh, Lyndon's a fan. And I think yes. after I'm this, a fan boy, obvious. yeah. After this, I'm a fan as well. And I look forward to getting down there. I know, K-Mac, you know, you're, you might actually be in a car right now, as far as I know. I, I'm on my way. Y'all can't see the background. I'm trying to sneak. Uh, I told him I'd be knocking on the door. He thought I was playing. Um, <laughs> but I'm on my way over there right now to taste that honey bourbon. Yes. That I is, can't wait. That is really great. And I know that... Uh, you know, the thing about salmon and one of the great things is not only is it healthy, but it is, a, it's a quick, easy thing to cook at home. It doesn't take all that long and uh, you prepare it with something fresh, like some great seasonal vegetables and maybe throw a little rice there as well. It's a, it's a really great option and a meal for yourself or your family. And, you know, we, we definitely appreciated you sharing that with us and taking us into your kitchen. Of course, I appreciate it guys for having me and i want to thank wyoming millwork and bay health and um king's creative and you guys for having me here today i really appreciate it i have one one more question um they're they're coming in they're popping in but how long should one reduce the mixture to actually make the glaze so we make a big batch at work. So ours takes a little bit longer about an hour and a half actually but with the recipe we gave you guys that should only take about maybe 20, 30 minutes on a low heat. And you just wanna make sure you keep on stirring it and you can see the thicker it gets. And however thick you want it, you just keep on cooking it. That's awesome. Yeah, and what other things would you recommend maybe you use that glaze for? I mean, obviously I would imagine you could use it on other well, things. On anything, honestly, I think it'd be good on some chicken. <laughs> Ooh, honey glazed chicken. chicken, yes. Yeah, that sounds good. I think you yes, do it of all of it. You got some bourbon glaze, some shrimp, some chicken, some salmon, some you name it. Oh, Chris, stop it. Stop it, it Chris. Oh, yeah, Chris, oh. you had me at hello. Yes. <laughs> I felt like uh, I just think well, I might just have to test it all. I'm going to glaze it all. To see what everything. Happens. Everything. It I don't might, even matter. I might even glaze that bourbon smash and just see what happens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then I'll be glazed, but that'll be different. <laughs> I could glaze the vegetables. I could just see me eating a piece of broccoli and just souping up the mixture on the rest of the plate. Oh, see, Chef yeah. Patanza, you're my new best friend. Oh, thank you. You're my best friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> my birthday coming up. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> great place for a special night. Birthdays are always a great occasion. You are so right. I'm going. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to go. Well, Chef. Chef Fatanza, thank you so much. Really, really great uh, experience watching you um, do your magic there right in front of us. And uh, 
I'm sure uh, you may have to indulge a little bit in the uh, the honey bourbon salmon you prepared, and hopefully there's a few plates going out tonight at the restaurant when you get back to work. Oh, yeah. We hope everyone's having a good time tonight. Uh, we encourage you, like Hey Mac has said, to uh, share your photos. Check us out on the socials. Uh, again, it's hashtag Meals on Wheels Delaware or hashtag Sip and Saber. So take photos of. Uh, if you're not having salmon, maybe you're having a PB and J or something. That's cool. Uh, take a photo of saying, "Hey, I know what I'm looking forward to getting out to and having next time I go out to eat." Or if you're having a some other cocktail, Bud Light, whatever it might be, and you want to get the painted stave, hashtag send us the socials. Hit us on the socials right now. What you're doing tonight, but also get out there support those two great local restaurants, or not one, one great local restaurant and one great local distillery. That's amazing. Um, I know that even some people are asking questions about a, a wine that it could actually be prepared, um, partnered with your meal. Do you have any recommendations, Chef Fatanza? Um, I'm not really, Sterling well, I know Sterling Cabernet is a really good wine that might go with it. I'm not really a wine type of guy, but I know that's a, definitely a popular one. Mm. Oh, so you're a bourbon man? Well, I'm more of a, a craft beer kind of guy. Okay, look at you. Well, you can always pair your salmon with some craft beer then. What kind of beer would you recommend for the salmon if that's the case? Um, 60 Minutes, my always go-to, Dogfish. There you go. Yes. That's another great local option and an amazing Delaware story for sure. So I could imagine, that sounds pretty good to me. I could definitely see myself sipping on a 60 Minute and enjoying that dish. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Hey, hey now, Chef, if, if you happen to be in the mood for a great handcrafted burger with craft beers, can you think of any restaurants that come to mind? Um, there is one, Restaurant 55, or ah. sister restaurant. Oh. Oh, I, I've heard of it. Where is it near Cool Springs? or uh, 55 steps away from Cool Springs. <laughs> and they also have great burgers delivered fresh every single morning and all the craft beers you could think of they have. <laughs> well, very, very good. And, and I think, uh, you know, we've enjoyed this. I think we've earned maybe a little bit of an opportunity to relax and, and enjoy some music. So I don't know if you guys uh, feel like the music, but I definitely do. What do you guys think? Yes, now we're actually moving into the entertainment portion of the evening. So that was a great segue. Um, thank you. Um, we have Jim Rasak for joining us this evening. Jim, I'm fat, I'm full, and I need some good music to help set my mood. Take it away, Jim. All right, we're going to be getting Jim in and on the line. I'm sure uh, we snuck in on him a little bit and we're Maybe a little earlier than we thought, but that's okay because we're just ready for some music. So we'll get him all set up here. I was going to start singing. I know, like, I know everyone wasn't ready for my vocals. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, if I have to um, step in for Jim, you let me know, sir, because I got at least one good song doo wop in my heart uh, that I could do. Well, now that you said that, we might have to take you up on it. But Jim, how you over there? I, yeah, can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you, sir. Good. Uh, before I get started, I'd really like to thank all the sponsors um, and uh, uh, Meals on Wheels uh, for this uh, opportunity. It's a worthy cause, as you've heard all afternoon, and it's my privilege. Uh, first song I'd like to do, uh, I'd like to dedicate it to the... Uh, uh, I'd like to dedicate it to the, um, uh, the, uh, the chefs and the mixologists this weekend. Uh, uh, it's called Masterpiece. Uh, you shouldn't have beauty for your eyes. For every sunset, the sunrise You should have music for your ears Wonderfully sad songs for your tears I 
I'll be a radio for your sleep. I'll be a safety net for your leap. And if forgiven eyes will see me, then I will be your masterpiece. There shouldn't be colors for your skies. Heavy relief of a good cry. You should hear words yet unspoken. Your heart should never be broken. I'll be a radio calling God's hand that keeps you from falling And if forgiven eyes will see me Then I might be your masterpiece Your love, your heart, a fine works of art Laid out for the whole world to see What you created and the years you have waited Are waiting right here in me should have cool grass for your feet Breezes to melt away your heat There shouldn't be blankets of moonbeams Words of the poets for your dream I'll be a radio calling God's hand that keeps you from falling and if forgiven eyes will see me then I will be your masterpiece And if forgiven eyes will see me Then I will be your masterpiece Wow, that was, that was awesome. And real quick, Jim, that was, that was its own masterpiece. And <laughs> It was really a beautiful song. That's an original. And we actually had somebody in the kitchen over there. We highlighted earlier with Molly. And oh, they, yeah. had, they had a bit of a masterpiece going on the plate. And I don't know if they already ate it, but yeah. we were hoping to show it off because it looked amazing. And we it is. It's amazing. Oh, my goodness. Well, half of it looks amazing. <laughs> you guys. Oh, man. Now, now, Molly, is that the first salmon you've ever cooked? Yeah. Wow, you look like a pro. My mom cooked it, but I was the one messing up stuff, getting things ready. Well, that's it's a team a team effort, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and if, somebody uh, wanted to say hi. Oh, okay. Hello there. Hi. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, we just wanted to say hi because we saw that salmon you guys cooked up. It looked amazing and. And with Jim's song with Masterpiece, it just kind of made sense. So great job. And we're going to take it back over to Jim for another song and keep this thing moving. <laughs> Molly, keep that dog away from the salmon, okay? <laughs> I'm a stone's throw from their house. I could go get some of that salmon after they have any left. But the dog <laughs> looked like it. It was eyeballing it. Um, Molly, if you stick around, I got a song for you. Uh, this one, though, is uh, called Paper Cup.
I have flown on empty wings. I've been shown what sadness brings. I've had oceans in my head turn into dried riverbed. But somewhere in those desert dreams, I dive into the deepest stream. It's your love surrounds me as I wait here for your love to drown me. My heart is a paper cup. Your love is what fills it up. Soaks right through me and surrounds me. All your love all around me. Love is water, love is ice, love can drown or baptize. I've been years without the rain, now I know love's other name. If only you could swim through me like water in the deepest sea. Then you know what I have when all your love flows over me. My heart is a paper cup. Your love is what fills it up. So right through me and surrounds me. All your love all around me. Sometimes I fill up my sea with an ocean, then I float in my boat asleep on your ocean. My heart is a paper cup, your love is. It up, soaks right through me and surrounds me. All you love, all around me. great thank you and i i actually was inspired um, ah, there you go <laughs> so i went and got one the, i can i tell a little story about that song uh so the the whole idea of the song was like uh you know, when you're a kid and drinking out of a little dixie cup there um you know you're at a birthday party you come back and your kool-aid or whatever's in there has soaked through it's still contained but like the the heart so filled with love that the love that actually expands out, but it's still there, you know, something like that. Anyway, cool. I've explained awesome. it much better in the past. Well, but so where do you, where, these are all, again, these are all original songs. Where, where can everybody get this music and, you know. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Um, I have about, um, right now about 36, 38 songs uploaded to, I have a YouTube channel, um, Jim Rezac Music. This, if you look for that on YouTube, uh, and there's a playlist, uh, Jim Rezac songs. Go to that because the other playlists are rockabilly and psychobilly songs by other people that I like listening to. But yeah, um, yeah so uh, Jim Rezac music on YouTube. Uh, shameless plug: uh, every Sunday night at eight o'clock in the evening, I do a live stream just like this right from here. The Delacaster guitar behind me, and. Um, uh, I do original music every Sunday night uh, on Twitch. You got to go to Twitch or find me on Facebook. Uh, I post the link there. But yeah, thanks for asking. Though. I appreciate that. That's great. Do you want to hear another one? You know, I think we do. I definitely do. How about you guys? Yes, sir. I'm ready. This is amazing. Okay. Um, okay. We have Molly still on and she hasn't bolted and she's still eating her salmon. This one's, uh, this was, this is her dad's. 
favorite song, he told me once. And uh, so I will always play this for him. It's called Connected. the song of my childhood it was the song of the crowd I never heard it wasn't listening and now it's playing so loud and I think it needs singers and I think it needs voices I think that my life comes down to just two or three choices. So I pick up the pen and I let go the guns. And I plugged in my fender and I thought of my sons. I was connected. I am connected. A bit imperfected. But I am connected. And I will never be lonely again. be okay just as long as my face will never be nameless because you feel just the same as I do I am connected inside an old man a small bit of youth and every lie that I've heard had just a small bit of truth my pockets are empty but my mind's just as clear and the ones that I heard now are the ones I hold dear and I am connected I am connected a bit imperfected but I am connected and I will never be lonely be homeless I'll be okay just as long as my face will never be nameless because you feel just the same as I do I am connected there's a song in the crowd gone on for days we're all standing together and our hands are all raised and I think I hear singers I could swear I hear voices and I know that my life comes down to just two or three good choices We are connected, still imperfect. 
perspective. But we are connected. And we will never be lonely again. We will never be lonely again. We'll never be homeless. We'll be okay. Just as long as our face will never be nameless. Because you feel just the same as I do. Hi. We are connected. Thank you. Thank you. I caught uh, someone was asking about the Twitch. I apologize. It's the only one of my social media that I don't have it under my name. It's under Delacaster. D L A C A S T E R. Thanks, Jimmy. Delacaster. Like that could part of it. Um, Can you type? Let me, it? let me show you. Thank you. If you that is the coolest guitar ever. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, the one and only. One of a kind, delicate. <laughs> um, but that's how you find me, okay? And the Spider-Man poster too. Oh, yeah. Uh, a good friend of mine, Brian Dawson, did a picture of two of my favorite guys playing my guitar. So. Yes, I so, love it. Anyway, yeah. Thank you so much. So much. Uh, this is a cool event. And again, thanks to all the sponsors. There's so many of them. I went through the list. I said I'll name them, but that'll take forever. Uh, we really you know indebted to the sponsors um, and meals on wheels you think you know about it but it, i got involved in this and started doing a little research and stuff yeah it, it's not it's much more than the meets the eye okay you got a special shout out from molly too in the audience uh, yeah molly that one's for you <laughs> <laughs> thanks you welcome can i do it uh can i can I do uh, one called an American song? You take your time, Jimmy, because I'm just enjoying myself. Hey, where's the, where's the cocktail? I don't see it. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you, you get, got to get your cocktail going. I was sipping. I, I, expected, a... I expected by the time I got on, everyone would be like <laughs> up on the desk. <laughs> She's like, in. You know, yeah. But, okay, so I can do, I can do, a, this one's called an American song. Uh and no big story, just uh, should speak for itself. But my dad kind of crops up in a lot of my songs. Maybe not so obvious, but this one is. Uh... Let's do that again. My father bought a station wagon back in 1966. He used to take us driving on a Sunday through the Delaware sticks. Yeah, my sister and my brother were riding in the back, watching 20 miles of a railroad track disappear behind them like a pole that was way too long. While my dad tapped on a steering wheel and whistled, American song. My cousins came from New York every summer. We'd all sleep in tents. I never saw my uncle without that pork pie hat on his head. Yeah, he and my dad would talk late into the night. Wondering if the world would ever be right While us kids were upstairs laughing and fighting and carrying on Singing different verses of the same American song Second jobs, second shifts, second chances just like this. 
not a second left to hate. American dreams and American electric guitars and American bands. We were already great. Yeah, my friend Salma came here when she was just 18. She worked hard, loved her new country, helped her neighbor. She caught the dream. Yeah, every now and then she puts her Nikes on, runs smiling down the street in a marathon. Every now and then she gets to go back home to Lebanon, where she sings in her own version of a brand new American song. Yeah, she's singing an American song. Sing along. Sing, sing, sing an American song. Sing, sing, sing an American song. It's all you. Sing, sing, sing an American, an American song. This is so much fun. God. Back with the big finish. Yeah, big finish. I had, hey, I just uh, felt and, and it in my like, soul. I had to come in somehow. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I heard you. I heard you. I got the, I didn't want to create any feedback here. So I got the, just a little bit cranked up on this. This is my little studio here. I got some, too many speakers, but I got the littlest ones and I got going through that. So, uh, <laughs> you know. um, let's see. St still me i'm still playing no one's yes, throwing it throwing anything well, yes, <laughs> you, you are rocking and rolling we're loving it and you know we just like enjoying this groove you've got going so if you've got another song i got them feed it to us this one's called waste me some of my you know you might you might be able to tell them that i'd like to give a shout out real quick to my lovely sister uh her daughter and my mom are also on but i want to say hi to my sister she thinks i forgot her before but i didn't marie Thanks for joining in. You're, you're a big supporter, and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you supporting Meals on Wheels. She's a heck of a cook herself. Aww. That's called Waste Me. Waste me. Please don't waste me. My heart is here for taking. Everybody needs a friend I've been yours since I don't know when. Take me I'm here for taking My heart is still worth breaking. There is something you should know There's still that fire down below If you want to, I will let you Waste all your love on me Look at me, I'm a brand new day When you want to, I will let you Waste all your love on me Somebody's gonna waste me away Your smile makes me smile. Your touch makes it worthwhile. Everybody needs that friend. And I've been yours since I don't know when. If you want to, 
I will let you waste all your love on me. Look at me like I'm a brand new day. When you want to, I will let you waste all your love on me. Somebody's gonna waste me. That's fantastic. And Thank you. you know, it's funny, we were just uh, chatting while you were playing some of that and we had talked about you doing some cover songs and I can't tell you how happy I am we did. <laughs> went with the original songs because this music is just so great yeah, to listen to. Yeah, I, I know. And uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was debating that. I was going to do it. And I said, you know, I, and it's not a judgmental thing or anything. It's just something I haven't been, I got the, the writing. I've been playing guitar all my life, but I haven't really written uh, until the last like nine, nine, ten years ago. I started writing music. I didn't see it coming. That's all I do now. And probably in the last 10 gigs, I've maybe played one probably a Beatles song, but uh, yeah, it's not what I do. So I, and thank you for letting me do this because some people would say, nah, we want to hear brown eyed girl. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started about that. You know? um, Speaking of which, uh, would you mind playing brown eyed girl? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> no. Uh, so seriously, I've, I've been in bands before, like, you know, later on in, in years, you, you join a band and everyone's saying, well, what kind of stuff are we going to do? And, inevitably someone says i don't care what we do i just don't want to do brown eyed girl lovely song love it love it love van marson but we, we you know you get my age you've played it enough you've listened to it enough where it's like now nah, let someone else play it you know, so, anyway. um hey jim where are some places we can catch you uh, live and in uh, person here um uh, if i had a rock i could probably hit one of the places i played last night uh trey sorelli dolce uh, the best ice cream stand, uh, stand in the state of Delaware and mini golf. Um, they, uh, I, I play there once a month. Uh, I used to play Harvest Ridge all the time. Haven't, uh, they're going to have me back out there, but once a month I play Harvest Ridge winery, 10 minutes, uh, out of, uh, t 10 miles out of, uh, Wyoming. Um, but even before the COVID thing, I started getting more into the live streaming and that's why I pitched that, uh, you know, live every Sunday, at eight o'clock um and if you're on facebook you can find the link there if you can't find me on the twitch thing but uh but thanks for asking but i play um those are the two places i uh, i played a lot of the the usual places the breweries and stuff like that but the more i started writing the more i started like playing like uh songwriter circles stuff like that and there hasn't been one of those of course for a while but we'll get there but thanks for asking lynn appreciate it yeah, no, we we really appreciate you just bringing all this great music and in the you know the the lyrics and the musicality and everything about it is they're just great songs and and we're wondering we're just hoping maybe you've got if you know maybe one more in you to kind of yeah. close us out and, and um, yeah I got one it's uh, one that I like to play <laughs> so you have your favorites that that people ask and uh, I see my mother's online too viewing this and there are all kinds of songs that she requests. Can I tell a funny story about my mom? Okay, so my mom one day came to a gig and she said, Jimmy, play me one of your songs. She kind of shouted that out. I said, which one do you want? She goes, I don't know, a, a good one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess uh, that was mom's way of saying, don't play a bad one. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, this one's called Flexible Flyer and it's just uh, some images of like, you know, you can probably guess where I fit in the age thing. But when I was a kid, there was some very influential time, early 60s, space programs, stuff like that. And it's not about that. Just these cool images of childhood and stuff. Uh, you know, it's called Flexible Flyer. I like playing. It's a good one to end on. I'll be your lightning 
When your clouds roll away You're flexible flyer On that winter day I'll be a mattress When your bones are tired Your retro rocket When your Your engines have fired I'll be your moon Angel, bluer than blue. I'll be your moon shadow. That's what I do. Look into the sky and see where you and I began. Look in your heart and you will know who I am. I was your floating spaceship in 63. A million waves like a million hands rolling up from a sea. They pull you away, they're pulling you back, they're pulling you home. I'm letting you go, but I'm letting you know you ain't going alone. Your moon angel, bluer than blue. I'll be your moon shadow. That's what I do. Look into the sky and see where you and I began. Look in your heart and you will know who I am. My head, but you're out of your mind. Doesn't matter to me, but it matters to time. Something you said stuck in my head. Glance safely home, but you're better off dead. I've been here before. It's just not okay. I've been here before. It's just yesterday. Nothing but talking. And we're walking, we're walking, we're walking. Once in a dream, once in a lifetime, a record was spinning. It felt like the right time. I put on my suit, looked at the moon. I put on my suit. I left the room. How could you do what you do, what you do? How is it you knew what you knew, what you knew? Anytime, any place, nothing but lies in all of the space. I'm be your moon angel, bluer than blue. I'll be your moon shadow. That's what I do. Look into the sky and see where you and I began. Look in your heart, you would know who I am. Thank you guys. Thanks. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You are amazing. I hope you know that from the bottom of our hearts here, we really appreciate your Thank time you. and definitely your talent. Thank you so much. No, um, you guys. Amazing virtual performance. Um, thank you to all of our sponsors actually tonight for making that happen. Lyndon, can you just give a, a, a brief shout out to all of our wonderful sponsors this afternoon? Let me see if I have them all. Um, I'll have to get, uh, yes, the slide. That will help. <laughs> we got you. Yeah, the media sponsor, Delaware State News. WBOC also being a kind media sponsor. King Creative, thank you very much for all the work in front and behind the scenes. Yes. Bay Health, Edible Del Marva, and the whole slew of other sponsors that we have here are sous chef sponsors, Eagle 97.7. We got uh, the cluck, the chicken there, Delaware. 105.9 FM, Cool FM, uh, CDC, our Ch Chamber of Commerce, Chesapeake Utilities, thank you very much. Delaware Today, 
Dover Federal Credit Union, Dover Post, Kathleen and Jim Hawkins, M&T Bank, Pews, Sam's Club, Shore United Bank, and Tidewater Utilities. Coming back with our Delaware Health Information Network, Delmarva Power, Del One, Fall Casson, Mr. Greg Schultz and Mrs. Pat Evans Schultz, Wilmington University, somebody called Lind State Representative Lyndon Yerrick and Janice Yerrick. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> and then in chef and training sponsors, Randy and Linda Farmer, Kim and Bill Fonda, Rich and Dottie Harper, Mercer, Se Mercer Seidel Dental, Dr. Christie and Mrs. Tracy Miller. Thank you. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Heartfelt thank you to our Sip and Savor at Home event planning volunteers, right? Ms. Kim Fonda, Ms. Debbie Smith, whoop, whoop, Ms. Tina Gardner, Ms. Tracy Miller. I, I can't thank you all enough. Um, I actually want to give my own personal shout outs too. I want to thank Regina, um, who's been wonderful to work with. Chris, I want to thank you because you are amazing. I want to thank uh, Randy for holding it down behind the scenes. This is my girl, marketing genius. Um, my cousin, Miss Susan Dodds, because I know she's a Mac in her former life, and I know, you know, we look just alike. You know, uh, Miss Ann Love, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, and to my wonderful co-host, uh, Mr. Yerick, you know, you are absolutely wonderful to work with. And I can't wait to eat with you at one of the many diners or restaurants that you happy frequented, you know, everything. But if, if everyone, if you've enjoyed today, please, please, please join us again tomorrow at five o'clock for a chef, for another chef and a performer, Paul Cullen. All of the details can be found again on mealsonwheelsde.org.org. So again, I'm comedian K Mac uh, from Wilmington, Delaware, the comedian with the big heart who gets the big laughs. Um, I'm actually the current 2019 comedian of the year. I have a show this evening if you're in the Dover area at the Boulevard um, at 9 p.m., which is a benefit for all first responders. So if you are an essential worker, um, please, it's free of charge for you. So I welcome you to come and laugh with me and let's have a good time. But this has been an amazing experience for me to just be able to participate and to work with such a prestigious and wonderful organization. So I wanna thank you all from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be the co-host. And I really, really hope I have the opportunity to do this again. Chris, do you have any final words for everybody? We do. We just want to make sure to remind everybody that because of you, we're able to really stick to the mission of this organization. And that is very simple, right? We all know it. And that is together, we can end senior, senior hunger. hunger. Yes. And that is a, that's a beautiful thing. And with that, we're going to play things out with the foundation mission video. So enjoy that, listen to that, maybe learn a few things if you don't already know it, and join us tomorrow if you can. We appreciate it. We're gonna play this here now and get that all queued up. But thanks so much for being a part of it. Lyndon, K-Mac, you guys were awesome. Jim, amazing stuff with the music and those original hits. Those are, it was fantastic to listen yes, to that. Yes, yes, really definitely. And Chef Vitanza over there in the kitchen, cooking up that salmon. Definitely made me hungry, so I'm going to be going to fix now, <laughs> and I'm looking forward you know, to that. So thanks, everybody, for being a part of it. We appreciate it, and for those who will be joining us tomorrow, I look forward to it. We'll see you all soon. Meals and Wheels Delaware has a specific mission, and it's to focus on the needs of seniors who receive a meal in their home across the state of Delaware. We're a little bit different from some other organizations. What we do is we make sure there's enough money, so we raise funds, we make sure there's enough um, resources and volunteers to deliver the meals, so we help to raise awareness. 
and then we work with five programs across the state that actually prepare and deliver the meals. Our reach statewide is to raise the resources, whether it's awareness that we can create, uh, allowing an individual to give, and their dollar can serve individuals from Wilmington to Dover to Selbyville. It's really uh, the best of the best coming together to serve some of the most vulnerable people here in Delaware. Because of this private public partnership because of the excellence of the meal programs. There's no waiting list for meals. If you need a meal, if you just come out of hospital, you're recovering, you call up. Within a day, two days, you can be getting that meal delivered to your home. Looking around the country at different states, not everyone gets a meal every day. Sometimes there's a months long waiting list to get on a meal. The meal delivery recipients at Meals on Wheels, and I think this is a common misunderstanding, it's not based on income, it's simply whether or not they are homebound. So people from all walks of life are recipients of Meals on Wheels. The seniors in the state need the support of the community, and uh, you know, that's what we're here to do. The state does not fund the full cost of providing the meals, so we rely very heavily on the support that we get from Meals on Wheels Delaware to ensure that we're able to continue to provide those meals to all the seniors that are in need. Their fundraising efforts help us fund just for the Meals on Wheels program here, so that helps us continue this service. There has been an increase in need down here. We have more people who have signed up for the program, which indicates that um, as the area grows in population, the percentage of people that end up needing the meals has also grown. A lot of our clients have outlived their families, have really no friends, and maybe they live in, in the outside areas where there's no close neighbors to really check on them. So Meals on Meals is very important in that it helps you know, the client remain in their own home and living relatively independent, and not just for food, but because somebody's checking on them. It really does take a village to get all of this done. There's, there's restaurants, there's volunteers, there's the seniors themselves, there's everyone running the organizations that are the boots on the ground. So there's a lot of moving parts and all of that takes financial support. A lot of people want to see how their dollars are used. And when we raise dollars, we invest them back into the, the centers, whether it be for transportation or volunteer support or heated bags, new ovens, new kitchen equipment. So it allows them to concentrate on raising dollars to, to meet the needs of their center where we can help them take care of this piece that allows them to stretch their dollars to serve other parts of uh, the senior population. If it were not for the kind of support that we're receiving from Meals on Wheels and other supportive organizations, we would not be able to provide those meals. And in many cases, the meal that we're delivering is the only meal that a senior is going to get that entire day. The need is so great and it matters so much. I can't tell you enough about my volunteers. They're out here in rain, they're out here in snow, they're out here in 100 degree weather, and they do it with love. When they see something that's just a little off, maybe the way they answered the door, they're coming back. Hey, can you give a call? Something wasn't quite right. I tell them all the time, they're my eyes. They truly are a lifeline, and to a lot of our clients, they are indeed the only person that they see all day long. It's more than a meal. They know that somebody cares for them and loves them and will help them out in case of an emergency. We find that we have this committed volunteer force just because they go out and like they see, they see what it is and they see how impactful it is. This is something that people need, something that people look forward to, like seeing someone every day, having a conversation with someone every day. You can see just by the glow in their face that it makes a difference. We're allowed so many working hours to volunteer as uh, WISFIS associates, so we never think, oh, I've got to rush and get through this without you know, having an opportunity to speak to these residents and to say something cheerful to them or just brighten their day in some way. The corporate community has been a great support for us with volunteers every day, Monday through Friday, and then financial support as well. So. They're really just a critical part of what we do in getting meals to people. I think to myself, this could be my mom, my dad, in that situation, and I would want someone to take care of them this way. They took me in right away. It was like I had been here for years. I feel good about just getting out and doing it, to helping people. They enjoy my company, and I, I enjoy theirs. It fills my heart. You know, I know that I've made a difference. It may be this big, but that's okay. 
and to have a conversation with someone who doesn't see anybody. It's what I would want somebody to do for me. And I think the great thing about it is, you know, it, it only takes about an hour to two hours to deliver the meals. It's a small amount of your day at a time, but you make a huge impact in that person's life. You do have personal relationships with, with all of them. I've run to the store for a couple and, you know, take out the trash. This outfit now is out of this world. I think it is anyway. Treat it nice. And they always ask me, can we do anything else for you? They always ask, do you need anything else? Do you know what that means when you're by yourself? It's, it's been really a great enrichment in my life. It really has. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It's, I look forward to it every day. It's very rewarding to get out and meet the, the recipients of the program. It's great to know that there are people, deserving people, on the other end of this entire process that we go through to raise money to, to make these meals happen. I absolutely love being able to go home at night knowing I made a difference in somebody's life. It really does make a difference and it's very powerful that it, you can see that in action.